Welcome everyone to a Han patch analysis here for version 4.9.4. This went live on the 26th of October, which was about a week and a half ago. I haven't gotten around to making a video here. We're going to go over the patch. It is a pretty good sized one. We haven't had a patch in quite a few months, so a lot of changes happening here uh, if you haven't been around in new earth the past week and a half but we're gonna get started here and go over what's going on here uh first things first we got a new avatar for draconis you can pick that up in the shop uh in the design section here this is staff of the master and legacy changes first one here is artesia uh so changed to pre-existing while the essence projection is active Relocation abilities cooldown reduced to four seconds, changed from two seconds. So it's getting an increase here of two seconds. Uh, where you can, or excuse me, how frequently you can reposition the essence projection. So with staff, you're able to move it around and it's global. It was on a two second cooldown, very, very powerful. So it got nerfed to four seconds here. Big, big difference. That gives you some time to spot it and kill it. Pretty, uh, pretty frustrating when our Nartesia can get that item rather early in the match. Uh, and it says here, Essence Projection, a relocation gains an additional 2 seconds of cooldown if used within 1600 radius of the enemy well. So, uh, you're going to be able to still put it in the enemy base, but you can't move it as frequently. And you got to kind of go for the kill there if you're going to go for that plan. So, some pretty, I like these changes. These are good as that can be a little bit frustrating uh, before. Here we have a Lord Self Forest Staff of the Master uh, effect addition, cooldown reduced to three seconds on life tap. Um, I'm actually gonna double check here what the actual cooldown of life tap is. I think it's six, it's five seconds. So not the biggest cooldown uh, change here from five to three, but still pretty nice. You can use the life taps a little bit more frequently. Uh, that's a nice addition. And then we have the Undying here, which is the ultimate staff of the Master Effect change to pre-existing. Distance required from the enemy to pause the duration of the Undying increase from 600 units to 900 units. So they, uh, there is a bigger leash range on that ultimate having the timer paused. Uh, so that is quite powerful effect. Um, I think this is something you still want somebody to give to you. I don't think you necessarily want to be buying the staff on Cell Forest, but it is not bad. Um, as you get the life tap cooldown as well reduction. So pretty nice effects here. Uh, we might be seeing this a, a bit more, but um, nothing like super, super crazy here. Very, very nice little buffs to the staff. Uh, I think this is regular hero balance now. So we are starting from the top here with Adrenaline. So he has been one of the problem heroes of the last patch. Had to deal with this one for uh, quite a few patches. Or excuse me, I have a few months uh, in one long big patch. Uh, but he's getting some toned down to his Shard Blast here, which is his first ability. Base mana cost increased uh, by 5 at all levels here. Base cooldown increased from 2.4 to 2.7 seconds, so minor increase there. Overall Shard Blast possible cooldown values are now reduced from 2.4, 1.8, 1.2 seconds to 2.7, 2.1, 1.5 seconds with respect to hitting two or more enemy heroes 0, 1, 2 times within the last 10 seconds. Bonus magic damage dealt based on your primary attribute attribute reduced from 30 40 50 60 to 20 30 40 50 so it went down at 10 uh, 10 percent at all levels there touch radius reduced from 100 to 80 a little bit more narrow there in the in the touch uh effect radius projectile speed reduced by 300 units so overall the skill got lots of tone back um it will slow down adrenaline's damage output by a little bit but i still think that this hero is still quite strong um not as uh maybe oppressive as he was before but definitely still very very strong has a very strong ultimate and very strong um mobility and toolkit to work with aluna deja vu this is the third ability mana cost reduced 
uh, by 10 at all levels. Cooldown reduced by 6 seconds at all levels. So the level 4 going down to 18 seconds uh, versus the 24. And the level 1 from 30 to 24. Those are the kind of big ones. But uh, nice little quality of life change there for Aluna. Aluna has been slightly underperforming on a consistent basis ever since Emerald Lightning, which is her stun, her Q spell, had its early attack speed drain nerfed. Deja Vu has a long cooldown with an unnecessarily high mana cost for its level of impact. So reducing these values will allow her to use Deja Vu more liberally. Nothing really significant, uh, but just quality of life, like I said, for Luna there. Arachna strength per level increased by 0.1. So minor strength gain. This will give her 2.5 extra strength at level 25. Web shot getting a movement speed slow increase of 5 at all levels. And attack speed slow increase of 5 at all levels as well. Uh, this will mostly help the laning phase. Um... As well as for killing throughout the you know mid early mid late game, uh, just some small number increases there. Um, the spider sting here getting one extra attack or health as it's called here in the description at levels two and three. So you need to hit it five or six times uh, at levels eleven and sixteen. Arachna has been consistently underperforming with the shift in the meta due to items like Lightbrand previously getting buffed. The late game resilience of the Spiderling from Spider Sting has been increased to make the ability more impactful for its active duration. So nice little buffs here to Arachna. Uh, I do agree with this. I think the hero was, was underperforming uh, ever since she got uh, some nerfs uh, in previous patches. So that should help her out uh, scale a little bit better into the mid and late game with the Spider. Uh, the Spider. Spiderling, the spider sting, however you want to call it, uh, having a little bit more impact there. Apex, decimate, attack damage still increased uh, to 1, 1 1.4, 1.8, 2.2. So the level 1 is pretty nice. It's You're no longer doing half of your attack damage. You're doing your full attack damage in an AoE. Uh, the level 4 getting 0.2 uh, more than the previous iteration. Uh, so that's nice. Fire Surge now resets attack upon cooldown or attack cooldown upon use. So you can attack, then immediately fire surge and attack and shoot your fire surge at enemies, which is really nice. This kind of fits with some other heroes in the game that have the it's attack reset mechanic. Heroes like Bensington's Lance Along, Lord Sephora's Life Tap. Uh, I'm sure I'm missing a few, but those are just some examples. So really nice quality of life again here for Apex. Uh, that'll be a nice, a nice feel change. So I like it. It's good. Blitz attack range reduced to 475. Very minor nerf here. Probably not even going to notice it. Weakens the leaning phase slightly. Um, Blitz is kind of supposed to be a weak laner. She's a really strong laner and really strong at running and running at people and killing them. So she's not supposed to have great harassment in lane. Uh, this is fine. Not really going to uh, be able to notice it, I feel like. Bombardier, Bombardment, Magic Damage increased uh, to 25, 40, 55, 70. So level 1's the same. Level 2 went up by 5, then 10, then 15. So overall, the max potential damage here from 220 to 280. That's a big deal. <clears throat> um, if I'm not mistaken... Part of that works on towers. Um, I just don't know how much. Is it... It's either 33% or 50% or something or other. So he'll actually be able to push towers a little bit nicer too. Doesn't say in the Lunatorium, unfortunately. But I am very sure that this does damage to buildings. So that is nice. That'll increase bombs overall damage output. Nice change. Or, or nice buff. Bramble, he's getting some max shield health reductions on two spells here, the Spore Breath and the Chomp from 400 to 300. Um, that'll make him a little bit less tanky, which is good. This hero is like ridiculously tanky, ridiculously fast, and his ultimate is crazy strong. Uh, Shrubbery, in Staring Shrubbery, heal magnitude when receiving hero damage reduced from 35 to 30%. Uh, so 5% less healing. Uh, <clears throat> I don't think this really changes too much. 
I think 30% is still quite good. So, Rambo's still going to be pretty strong. Might need more nerfs in the future. We'll have to see, but pretty strong hero. Rambo has been ever so slightly over overperforming throughout 6 plus patches and has not been talked about. Small nurse over time. We'll determine if she requires more changes or not. Okay, one sec here. Okay, on to Bushwhack. Crippling Dart, this is the Q spell. Now also applies a 75% mischance to the affected target for the duration. Movement speed slow increase from 70 to 75%. Uh, I need to double check. I think that lasts for like 3 seconds. Uh, why does nothing say duration here? Oh, to 1.5. 2-5 seconds. It's really not that long. Like, the Crippling Dart Slow is uh, is not that long. But for that short duration, you get a miss. Uh, I, I guess it's nice. I, I don't know how often this is really going to come into effect. <clears throat> Bushwax, niche as a specialized Congorce Slayer is a little too narrow. A small quality of life change to timing Crippling Dart correctly will make it more useful in actual team fights. I suppose that is quite true uh you know that that miss could come in handy if you time it right i don't think this really ups bushwhack's viability all that much i, I think this hero still kind of is lacking um so yeah it, it it is a quality of life change like the description says here but i don't think it's all that significant draconis strength gain by 0.1 Qual small quality of life thing here for Draconis. Uh, here, this hero is really strong. Um, if you know how to play him, he's a big threat. He farms really fast, does a ton of damage. He's very mobile. The hero is really, really good. Um, and yeah, this is just going to give him 2.5 extra strength by level 25. It's really insignificant, but a nice quality of life change. Drunken Master. Okay, so he's kind of up there for me, at least, with the big patch offenders of last patch with adrenaline this hero is ridiculous and a big part of why he's ridiculous not only because he does a lot of damage very quickly but the hero is just so hard to catch and kill and sometimes he can just run away from like four people because <clears throat> because of his drink ability so stun and debuff duration reduction per charge decreased from 1 to 0 0.5 percent so I believe it. Is, I believe you get 45 charges on drink. Uh, yeah, it says here 45 drunk charges. So that's gonna be that used to give you up to 45% stun and debuff duration. So like if you got sheeped with max charges, it's it's almost like a half half duration sheep. Uh, I mean it's, stuff's ridiculous when it comes to this drink ability. He gets crit. He gets evasion. Anyway, uh, that's cut in half now, so I think that's a very, very big deal. But I, I don't think this makes him like a like a significantly worse hero. It just makes him more manageable. The hero still deals ridiculous amounts of damage, very, very fast still, and he still does get stunned in debuff duration. So that is quite nice. Uh, so yeah, it says here, Drunken Masters a little too resilient to crowd control. With recent changes to drink, this helps alleviate those issues. Fade, strength reduced by two. Um, okay. Uh, Fade already is a weak laner. She's Her, her big weakness is kind of early game. She needs levels. Uh, once she gets levels, she kind of... I don't want to say takes over the game, but she's, she's always a presence in the game. So, Fade... Fade is a good hero outside of laning phase. Uh, this just makes his landing face even worse. So, uh, Gravekeeper. This is a, actually a pretty cool change here. So, Corpse Toss now has two charges at all levels. You used to have to wait till level three Corpse Toss to get the two charges. Now you can get uh, two charges at level one. So, to compensate for that buff, we have magic damage rescaled here. Uh, 50 on level one. Uh, it scales by 30 per level up to 140, which is what it used to be. So this is really just fixing the early levels of Corpse, to Corp Corpse Toss. And then the stun duration went down from 1 to 0.4, 0.6, 1, and 1.2. So 
you get two stuns at level one, but they're like mini stuns. 0 0.4 seconds at level one is really not really a stun. It's like a little mini stun, like makes you stutter step. You know, it's not like crazy. So this is, this is a nice quality of life change. It makes Gravekeeper's laning phase a little bit nicer. He could maybe be a better support, but this doesn't really change a whole lot with the hero. I think it sounds nicer on paper than it actually in practice. But the hero is is he's a good one v one er, um, but then he kind of falls off. Uh, he's really squishy, whatnot. But nice, nice, nice pusher, nice solo kill hero. Uh, this is a lot. Of, uh, this is a quality of life change for Gravekeeper again. So we have a lot of quality of life changes so far. Icor, this hero has been kind of getting pushed left and right in the last few patches, but. Uh, <clears throat> Strength growth by 0.2 per level increased here. He's a little bit tankier. Life leech cooldown down to, uh, from 14 to 12 seconds. So you have it, have that a little bit more frequently. 12 seconds is very nice. Saint's Blood, I believe this is the third spell. Grants a base 5% damage reduction. Max damage reduction increased by 5 at all levels here. Hyperic Blood active effect no longer depends on Blood Rush in any way. That's the ultimate. Icoric Blood active effect is now available once level 1 of Saints Blood is learned. Icoric Blood now heals the affected target for 5, 10, 15 health. Okay. Blood Rush base heal per second increase from 15 to 20. These minor buffs after Icoric's adjustments in 4.9.3.1 should make him strong but fair with the appropriate kind of play. Okay. So you get some buffs uh, across, <coughs> across a few of his spells there. Okay, next is Clanks. Attack range reduced from 550 to 475. So Clanks is getting quite a bit of attack range nerf here. 75 doesn't sound like a lot, but it is quite a bit less. He's under 500 range now as a carry. This change allows for more realistic counterplay against Clanks, as well as making it more difficult for him to kite neutral creeps around while farming them, increasing the amount of damage Clanks received overall when farming neutrals. So the idea here is to make him less resilient to damage. He's not as easily able to poke damage from far away. Um, now note here, none of Clanks' damage has been changed. So this hero still deals ridiculous amounts of damage as a carry. He just has to get a little bit closer to his targets now. Uh, and the main feel for this one is not only laning phase, but as the description says, farming the neutrals. So. I don't think this one is going to be crazy impactful, but it's definitely going to give more counterplay against Clanks, I feel like. Because Clanks is going to have to be a lot closer to you now. Almost 100 units closer. That is quite a quite significant. Uh, but again, still a crazy, crazy strong carry. Uh, deals uh, a lot of damage. So I think we'll still see the hero quite a lot. Kraken, Tsunami Charge, uh, Travel Speed Reduced. It's like almost a 10% speed re reduction. I don't think you're going to really notice that too, too much. You probably will, but it won't be like, oh my god, I can't land my Kraken Charge no more. No, no, no. It's, it's only like 0.8% like slower. Uh, release the Kraken. So this one is a, is a little bit of a nerf. Radius for the pull, movement, and speed, slow restraint effect reduced from 300 to 250. Uh, so you have to be a lot closer to the center uh, to get that effect now. A little bit easier to run out of it. Uh, I like that because I think Kraken ult is insanely strong with the addition to the restraint through uh, Shrunken. Mage main flash, uh, flash getting its range rescaled. Uh, this is due to a portal key range nerf. Uh, I think it was from 1200 or 1250 down to 1100. We're gonna also see the other blink heroes later down down the list here getting the same treatment. So mage main's getting it's a buff at level one, but level two is the same. Level three and four are nerfed blink range. Malakin possession affected enemies are now sighted and revealed for the duration. Wow, that is so cool. Uh, so you can like possession in fog and you get sighted them for the duration of them being feared. That's really cool. Uh, and as far as I'm understanding this, 
enemies can be invis around you and if you hit possession they get sighted that's that's cool uh, it's a nice buff to Malakin <clears throat> monkey king flying nimbus mana regeneration per second while active reduced to three five seven so monkey king is an incredibly fast uh, flash farmer this hero is picked up all the time in pubs and even in tournament games uh ridiculous damage output with minimal items but can farm insanely fast does crazy amounts of damage quickly with with items um, and a lot of it's due to how fast he can farm due to his mana regen and especially with items like light brand in the game uh dawnbringer and then the the nimbus mana regen it's like holy cow this hero is just farming 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 but now his level two ultimate is his old level one and his level three is worse than his old level two so he got a bit of mana reduction uh regeneration reduction on the ultimate there do i think this is going to make the hero uh worse not really no i think it's just going to make mana usage a little bit more uh significant but the hero still has plenty of mana regen still farms plenty fast so not going to be too 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 big of a nerf there Moraxis arcane shield cooldown reduced to 24, 21, 18, 15. So the early levels, uh, less cooldown. Level 4 is still the same. Get one more second buff duration increase uh, after an absorption of a spell. 7 seconds on the buff. That's pretty pretty nuts. Um, just some quality of life, really. I mean, this isn't. nobody's going to really notice this too much. Um, Nitro. Attack range increased to 600. So Nitro's big deal. He's kind of like Arachna to compare him to a hero. He needs to have a good laning phase in order for him to thrive. And he's a very good laner, uh, especially in 1v1. Uh, so this is going to make his laning even more powerful. Overdrive, attack damage penalty reduced uh, by 10%. So 50, 40, 30 instead here. Uh, nice buffs to Nitro. I mean, the hero, the hero is solid. Very strong 1v1-er. Very strong solo killer. Uh, I don't think he's like an amazing carry hero, but very, very good solo laner ganker. Kind of like a backup core. Um, I think we'll see Nitro quite a bit. Hero is pretty solid. Parasite. Draining Venom uh, decreased here. By 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%. So... This is what Draining Venom used to be back in the day, 6, 12, 18, 24. And uh, I like this change. Uh, ever since Codex got buffed in a previous patch, the hero's been just, everyone's buying Codex on him. He's doing ridiculous amounts of damage. Now, again, Codex does not work on the Venom, but the Venom works with the, the Leech and the Face Hug. So, uh, that's going to be 4% less damage. Uh, on the natural spells there. We're still going to see Codex Parasite. Uh, but he's going to be dealing a little bit less burst damage overall. Uh, I like this change quite a lot. Pearl Asphyxiate is the Q spell here. Magic damage on initial impact increased by 10. Initial impact now also instantly removes buffs on the affected enemy target. Nice. You don't have to wait for the second impact to remove a buff. I like that. It's a good change. Nice quality of life change. Makes Pearl's purge effect on her asphyxiate. Uh, very, very nice. Pebbles here. Base intelligence increased by one. Helps early combo damage. I think the hero was fine before, but he'll have a little bit extra, like, a little bit of extra mana pool early on. Not gonna be too, too, too much. It's like one minor totem. Uh, Puppet Master, Puppeteer's Hold, Force Pull Increased, okay, almost double the, the unit per second pull, pull force here, quite nice, this skill doesn't do damage though, it's just to keep, keep enemies in place, um, so I don't think this really matters all that much, again, this is like a quality of life change, Voodoo Puppet, Puppet is now unkillable, 
Upon reaching zero HP, it will, it will persist for another 1.4, 1.8, 2.2 seconds and then expire. Overflow damage will not be amplified after this point. Voodoo Puppet still expires if the affected target moves outside of the leash range. So, Bubble Master's performance has been low ever since his one trick burst damage playstyle with Assassin's Shroud into Voodoo Puppet has been discouraged with changes in a past patch. Puppet Master and his teammates can now properly use Voodoo Puppet as a damage and crowd control proxy without amplifying excess damage to the foe and encouraging one shot burst damage builds with Voodoo Puppet. The single change to Voodoo Puppet drastically buffs Puppet Master as damage time on target is greatly increased without directly amplifying damage dealt to the target. Cool. So the Puppet Last uh, will stay there for an additional 2.2 seconds at level 3, even if the damage has been overflowed. I mean, uh, you know, damage has been uh, fully fully used up. Um, so I'll give an example. You can, I don't know, most people probably don't know this. You can use stuff like Tempest Ultimate on the Voodoo Puppet, and even if the enemy hero isn't in the Tempest Hole, they will be holed. So I just felt like saying that. A lot of people don't know that. It's a cool little interaction. You can do all kinds of stuff with Voodoo Puppet. Uh, same thing works with like Chronosphere. Now granted, you wouldn't Chronosphere a puppet uh, most of the time anyway, but uh, you can do all kinds of stuff with like stuns and slows and stuff. So it is nice that the uh, the puppet will still stay there for an extra two, two seconds and change. Uh, Chi, base strength increased from 18 to 22. That's nice. Chi is pretty squishy. Uh, I like this. Uh, I, I've actually recently been jungling Chi. Uh, if you guys are interested about that, make sure you check out my matchmaking videos where I think I have a game or two of jungle Chi. Pretty fun. Um, but yeah, this is just a little, a little nice buff here for Chi starting HP. Very nice. Uh, Rampage. Upon casting Stampede on an enemy hero, now also pings the target on the minimap for your team. Also outputs a team-only chat message that tells them you are charging that player with Stampede. Now shows a visual effect on the target, only for your team when they are being targeted by Stampede. So quality of life changes were added for Rampage to let his team know that he's tar targeting with Stampede. Cool. I like that. That's that's really good. So you get a message now if your teammate's charging. <clears throat> okay, here's another big one. This is another big offender of last patch. Thunderbringer. He was very overtuned with some of the other heroes. So he's going to get quite a few nerfs across the board here. Attack range going down by 50, down to 350. So he's going to have a much weaker attack range in laning phase. Strength growth reduced from 2.5 to 2. That's quite a lot. 0.5 per level. Uh, that's 12 and a half, I think. 12 and a half strength uh, total by level 25. Chain lightning having its cooldown increase from 1.75 to 2 seconds. Blast of Lightning getting 10 damage reduction at all levels. It still does the mini stun, which is kind of, which is what makes part of that ability quite strong, is it does like a 0.4 second mini stun. Um, and Lightning Rod, this is the passive. Magic damage change to 2.54, 5.57%. So 1% less uh, of the target's current health, but 1% is, is, is significant. It is percentage, uh, not a flat number value. So, um, that is the ability that scales Thunderbringer's damage throughout the game, which makes him a really powerful late game hero. Thunderbringer is finally recognized as a viable hero in competitive play. He's still slightly overtuned, but he, he overall has a unique niche in the game, despite mostly offering, only offering damage in ganks and team fights. Yeah. Especially with his ability to counter wars with his blast of lightning and stuff. Uh, the year has been really, really powerful, um, uh, as well as people picking up Grimoire and uh, Resto Stone and just blowing up a, a whole entire team. So the hero has been pretty toxic lately, getting a, a lot of nerfs across the board here to kind of tone down his damage numbers. Tremble Hive Mind. This is the ultimate uncontrollable shutters attack damage increase to 70, 105, 140. So 10. Uh, 15, 20, 
there on the 123. Tag wrench or shutter increased from 128 to 150. Okay. Some some nice damage buff there for Tremble. Valkyrie, she gets her starting attack damage increased by 3 to 2 higher. That's nice. I feel like whenever I play Valkyrie, I feel like I don't hit very hard. Uh, so <laughs> that that's going to be a little bit of a nice laning phase buff there. I think a little bit of extra damage. Uh, courageous Sleep cooldown. Oh, wow. Uh, so 10 seconds at level 1 down to uh, from 35 to 25. That's huge. And then down to 16 at level 4. That is really nice. Uh, how long does the buff last for... I don't know how long the bus lasts for, but you get attack speed too with the leap, which is what makes the leap so nice. You get movement speed um, and attack speed in an AOE to, to allies. Okay, this one's a pretty nice one here. Voodoo Jester getting some buffs across the board. Acid Cocktail. Initial projectile speed increased from 800 to 1200 units per second. This skill got 33% faster. Uh... Bounce projectile speed increased from 600 to 700 units per second. So the stun bounces faster as well. Curse ground magic damage per second at level 1 of the ability increased from 6 to 8. Okay, that's a minor minor thing here. Not a big number change on the curse ground. Spirit Ward has its cast range, cast range increased from 400 to 600. So you get a little bit of a nicer safety net of... Uh, how far you can stay away from your target. Projectile speed increased from 1,000 to 1,300 units per second. So Voodoo Jester is not a viable pick at higher levels of play. He has received some buffs that make him more reliable throughout the game. I agree. I think uh, the stun, you know, go ahead and try out Voodoo Jester. You might be pleasantly surprised at how fast the stun is. Uh, and then the extra cast range on the Spirit Ward. Quite nice. Uh, as I have actually gotten a chance to try that one. I like that one quite a lot. So Voodoo Jester getting some nice love there. Wretched Hag, so this is in line with the Mage Bane blink uh, changes. So 800, 900, 1000, 1100. So 1250 down to 1100. Not going to really comment on that too much. So that's all of the hero balance. Now we're going to go into the item balance section. So a Deeves Cloak, this is the defensive item that got added recently into the game. Recipe cost reduced from 1100 to 900. Uh, you can upgrade this twice, by the way. Total cost reduced uh, from 2334 to 2100, 3000 gold. Max health bonus reduced by a bit there. Max mana reduced. Damage reduction while active increased from 15-40% to 20 50% stun and debuff. Uh, duration reduction changed from 15, 40% to 20, and 50%. Deep's Cloak receives a number changes to make it more of a viable choice compared to other cost effective mid game items that are commonly picked up on heroes that need to protect themselves from burst damage. So, yeah, it's getting a 10% uh, damage reduction and debuff, stun and debuff buff, and it costs less. So, nice changes. You might see the Deep's Cloak a little bit. Uh, a little bit more often picked up here. Barbed armor going up in price by 300. Cooldown reduced from 40 to 35. Return damage from barbed armor's active effect now ignores 50% of the damage reduced by armor and magic armor. That's huge. That's a big buff to barbed armor. So barbed armor was like really, really strong, or it was like really, really weak. Then it got really, really strong in one patch. And in last patch, it kind of got nerfed. I don't want to say nerfed too hard, but it was not really viable. I don't want to say at all, but I mean, there's very few heroes in the game that can really benefit from Barbed Armor. The big one is like Legionnaire um, and Cthulhu Fun, I guess, when he can force you to attack him. So uh, there are a couple of heroes that can take good use of Barbed Armor, but overall the item was very lacking. And this is going to make it quite better uh, because now it's going to ignore uh, some of the reduced damage from armor. Armor is a bit a little ineffective since it's, since it's adjustment. This increases the item's viability without bringing back the problems it previously had while maintaining an appropriate price point for its effect. Okay, 
Ether Jewel no longer grants couriers any amount of mana. Okay. Uh, yeah, so people were like putting wards on couriers, codexes, what, you know, whatever, you name it. Uh, and this item was like 450 gold. Throw that on a courier. A little too cheesy. Uh, portal key. Getting its range from 1200 down to 1100. So this is in line with the Mage Bane and the Wretched Hag blink ranges. Portal key getting reduced here by 100 range. So Portal key's range is being reduced slightly due to the general attack range and cast range changes that have been that have taken place within the last few patches. So yeah, a lot of heroes have had their attack ranges adjusted. We're also having portal key adjusted here as well. Word of Sight and Word of Revelation. Usage is not disabled when on a courier. So that goes kind of with the Ether Jewel thing. Uh, matchmaking. I don't know if I really want to talk about bugs here. Da, 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 da. I don't think so. We can skip through all this stuff. Items. Items and consumable slots will not have properly. Um, if the drop items game option is enabled, Librand da 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 dot state is now properly transferred by certain abilities. Okay, Ophelia's pack now outputs chat messages to the player as objectives are being completed. Oh, right, the Ophelia's pack change. This keeps a record of the current quest progress which is difficult to feasibly keep track of on the Ophelia's pack. So every time you stack a camp, place a word of sight or place a rev ward with the Ophelia's pact on your hero uh, activated, your game will output a message to you telling you how far along you are with your pack. This is a awesome, awesome, awesome change for support players. Uh, if you're a support player, you're going to love the Ophelia's pact change here. Um, it'll keep you updated with your progress there on the pack. Pegasus this boots, the user can no longer target themselves. Okay, words, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so that's going to do it. We went we went through the whole patch. I'm not going to go over bugs. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the patch analysis here for version 4.9.4. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, see you in New Earth and see you all in the next patch analysis video. Have a good one, guys.